right through windows, cracks, holes, whatever mm -hmm. in the envelope. And based on the volume and size of the inside of the house um, and the amount of air leakage that we have, we can calculate what the air exchange rate is. Mm -hmm. In other words, how much air um, is exchanged in one hour. And then are you going to try to find where it's drawing air in, or is that a lot after, not, after not we after right we now. we'll run up uh, we'll do a five point uh, depressurization test, uh, then we'll do a one point at fifty pascals, and, that, and at that point we'll walk around. Cool. That is out. Can I do it for what? Yes, please. Thanks. Typically while we're doing a walkthrough in the beginning when Marie and Dave were doing that, they were also checking the windows to make sure you're doing close and last. Right. So that's okay. Dave, I don't have the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, just write it down. Um, you want me to go get it from her? I think you write it down. We're in no danger of the house imploding, right? We're, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. The pressure is not that extreme. All right, I've got 9.6, 445. Ring B. Yep, ring B. Uh, pressure flow. So what are you writing down? He's giving you numbers and you're writing down. Writing down the house pressure and uh, the fan flow in CFM. Mm -hmm. And um, we do a five point test for accuracy. Uh, uh, so we get five points and then, then you can graph that. You can plot those five points to get a curve. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if, the, if, if some of those points are outside of the, of the line when you extrapolate it, um, that means that there's uh, an anomaly, or, or something's not. Uh, there could be a there could be a leak in the house, or um, uh, the wind outside could be affecting, affecting it. it. Right. Sure. Um, as it gets as it gets a little windy windier outside, we'll do uh, averaging. We'll, um, we'll go to five second averaging or ten second averaging, depending okay. on how windy it is out. If it gets too windy, we probably shouldn't do a blow door test at all because it's not going to be very It'll just throw it off. Usually, if, it's, if you get above 30 mile an hour wind gusts or 35, you probably shouldn't be thinking about doing it. I'm at 40.3. 40.3? Uh huh. 12.5. Uh 12.47. And you're on ring A? Yes. It got noisier for a while, but did you notice any other differences when they were doing that? I'm just the producer. I don't want
Can you get a baseline again? Yeah. We're going to get a baseline reading again um, for the pressure differential between inside and outside. And then we're going to run a, a single point at 50 pascals. And why were you taking in and out different inserts in the fan? Um, um, it's based on the it's based on how tight the house is and the amount of flow that we want to achieve. Um, it's it's basically for accuracy. You're you're, uh, you're you're changing the orifice size of the fan on a real tight house to get uh, to get low fan flows. We need mm -hmm. to go to a smaller ring. Mm -hmm. uh, the larger the house that you have, typically you have to remove rings. Because you've got to flow more. You got to bring more air fan. through. Um, you, if you get into a, a very large house, you won't have any rings on it. You'll have an open fan. Even at that point, because you have such a large volume in a large house, you may not be able to reach 50 pascals. To get the pressure you want. Right. Yeah. So you have to use a can't reach 50 factor. Hmm. Shouldn't be a problem in GHI because our hoses are no. all pretty small. No, they're small. Once you get above, once you get outside of 6,000 square feet. Can't yeah, we won't find that here. While we're depressurizing the house, if we look, if we look around with the camera, you know, it's infrared, so it senses uh, differential in temperature. Mm -hmm. So since it's warmer in the house, we're going to get a blue or green uh, resolution uh, if any cold air is coming in. Yeah. Yep. So Actually, you're kind of focused on the on the wall down I'm, here. I'm looking at the seeing. baseboard right here, and it's I've got a lot of blue around that baseboard. So there's air there's leaking through there. The oh, so like behind the heater. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. maybe not. So that's an indication that it's not insulated as well. As well as the rest of the wall around it. As I work up to about the intersection with the ceiling and the wall, um, I can probably do it like this. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look too bad, actually. There's not a lot of change there. You can see around the, our test rig. Yep. Um, so what are you saying, Dave? You're getting getting a lot of blue underneath just the baseboard? Under the baseboard and around the window frame. Okay, well that can be infiltration. And it is. Feel it? Yeah. I'm seeing quite a bit of blue where that's coming from. Well, see this gap under the window? Hey, check this out. It's all blue all the way across the top here. Check this out. Which here? It's probably a um, header. Which so it's not insulated. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm getting a lot of leakage under that gap. Yeah, it's well, yeah, that gap right there. I might have to stand back a little bit. Yep. Look, Is that all the way along that wall, or what are you? No, as, I, the... as I cross from the piano, 
Is it about where the electrical lines might be run? Yeah, there's some electric. Yeah. So maybe when they ran some of those electrical lines, they moved insulation out of the way, or it's not the same. What's the construction? Frame, frame, frame and balloon. Mm -hmm. This looks under insulated. What room is this? This is the dining room. I don't know. Might be the living room in some people's houses. It's the living room. Yeah, right. Because that's the addition. This would be the living room. How about these windows or that baseboard heater? Same deal? Uh, yeah, I see a fair amount of blue. 